Hey there, so I just spent three days at the Amen Clinics and in Atlanta, Dr. Daniel Amen, um, probably the most popular brain spec scanner in the United States. Um, he has a few clinics around the country, but one is in Atlanta. And so uh, I had scanning done in my brain. My particular uh, symptoms are those of ADD. So, uh, and, you know, I, I do medically assisted therapy to manage my ADD. Um, but I want to see why, you know, if it's really showing in the brain, do I really have it? So here's a scan. Uh, the colors have no significant. It's just made to look pretty. So you could kind of take a look at it. But on this scan, you could see that uh, this is like the um, bottom view of the brain looking up. This is a side view, and as you can see, you know, it's mostly smooth. It's not jagged, it's mostly smooth going across. This is from the top of the brain looking down, and this is a side view also. So you can see, for the most part, for a female ages 38 to 46, this is what a normal healthy brain would look like. So after looking at the normal healthy scans, um, because there's thousands and thousands of done on people that do have normal healthy brains. Uh, I compared them to my scans and this is what was found. So in the area of the prefrontal cortex you can see comparatively it's smooth on the normal scan but on here I definitely have two uh, holes and what the holes mean is that there's a lack of blood flow in that area. Blood is not flowing in that area and there's lots of dents inside there you know where blood is not flowing and and um right here on the parietal um i think that's how you say it parietal this is a sign of brain injury so on the top of my head there's a significant hole looking um, and then you can see it up here from the side view that big indenture there's actually a hole in my brain as if i uh, suffered a brain injury and had a significant um, a brain, uh, just a brain injury there. So um, there's no blood flow going right there. This is not normal to see something like that. So I don't remember having a brain injury, but maybe my parents dropped me on my head when I was a baby and they just didn't tell me and I don't know, maybe they don't remember. Now this is very commonly found in people who play sports and I did play lots of sports as a kid, maybe the soccer ball or softball or something, you know, hit me on the head. NFL players, um, many uh, go to Dr. Amen's or the Amen clinics for brain scans because this could be a very uh, common thing that is found uh, with football players for sure. Uh, people in all different types of contact sports. And so this part of the brain right here um, also is affected by inflammation. So maybe if I have food sensitivities or uh, chemical sensitivities, um, it would affect the frontal lobe, which is up here. And, and this is where, you know, ADD and you know occurs so so certain foods that I eat or certain food sensitivities that happen here it just gets overloaded it's too much so then I feel symptoms of ADD up here um, so so this moves forward which is which is up there and affects that so um, very interesting about ADD and uh, so let's take a look at the inside of the brain so oh and then right here I'm sorry here's another scan Okay, so this shows the temporal lobes right there. The temporal lobes have a lot to do with temperament and um, memory, okay? And again, this is all science. This is not people's opinions. This is science. Um, and so a normal temporal lobe would look like that. And I have some dents in there. So there could have been like some bangs or some damage or something that happened there. And again, it is not like physical then it, it just shows a lack of blood flow in those areas so what the dents and the jagged shapes show or the holes so to speak signifies a lack of blood flow in that area and so now here is what a healthy 
brain on the inside would look like and the white signifies blood flow and activity and so the cerebellum at the bottom of your brain um, you know that that controls a lot of the brain's operations so that should always be pretty active and so on a healthy uh, scan it would look like this where the white matter the um, well, I guess the white activity is towards the back of lower part of the brain the cerebellum so as you look at this um, and then you compare it to mine um, you see quite significant differences so there's the healthy where it's at the back base and then uh, mine has white matter going on in well white blood flow showing in the middle and that's the basal ganglia and for a lot of people even though I don't struggle with addictions um, for a lot of people who struggle with addictions that is where um, a lot of that can root from and I'm not even gonna get into that here because there's so much you could say about that and this video will go forever but um, if someone did struggle with addictions this is where they'd have it and if they try to smoke a lot of weed or do drugs or alcohol to feel normal again that's how they kind of feel normal again and it all effect is affected in this basal ganglia area and um, when you take a you know like a, a GABA supplement right the GABA um, it can help you know repair this a little uh, for me probably my issue um, with basal ganglia is that I am very um, sensitive like everything uh, can seem very real to me so if I'm watching violence on the TV even though it's fake I really get the same sensitivity and emotion as if it's really happening in real life so that's why I'm very sensitive to watching things or uh, exposing myself to certain things um, anxiety all that can come from there I mean I'm thankful that I manage all that well um, but I definitely have the potential, if it is not managed, to uh, suffer and struggle from those things. Also, the uh, thalamus is right there, and you can see uh, that I have uh, white showing there, um, which is which means that uh, my brain is working extra hard there to try to produce dopamine. So, you know, a dopamine supplement might be good for me. And this is where I really have a problem with people coming to you saying, oh, here, try this. This will make you feel good. Oh, here, try this. Somebody handed me, I think, dopamine and serotonin once, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. But I, I personally don't think anybody should be taking any supplements unless their doctor has done, you know, radiology like this and, you know, a medical doctor or, or someone who's qualified has taken your blood work and, and shows that you truly do have that deficiency. Otherwise, you're taking something you don't need, and that could be harmful. So, anyways, it's very clear on here that a GABA supplement and a dopamine supplement would be good for me. So, um, that's definitely where I have to work extra hard to overcompensate. And this all could be hereditary, you know? So, this uh, brain imaging was done uh, while I was resting. And then this brain imaging was done during a high concentration activity. So there's not too much difference. Uh, and it definitely explains reasons why people deal with what they deal with. So, you know, after all this was evaluated, you know, by board certified doctors and, um, and it was, you know, reviewed with me, um, it, it really, uh, they gave me an amazing treatment plan of course, I could still say on my medically assisted uh, therapy, you know, and Adderall is something um, that, you know, I was told by many people is toxic and I should try to get off of it, but it absolutely does not uh, lead to, um, if used appropriately and the way that your doctor has prescribed it to you, it does not lead to cancer. It does not lead to deteriorate. In fact, the worst thing would be if I wasn't taking it and I wasn't doing my medically assisted therapy then it would not work well um, but some other things on my treatment plan of course is a exercise um, routine that that is specific to me that I'll need and 
Uh, definitely dopamine and GABA and omegas is super important. But, you know, somebody's omegas are just fine. You know, they don't need to add anymore. But, it, but you can see right here, I need it for brain repair, right? Also on the treatment plan was to consult with a functional medicine doctor that can go through and help identify, like, maybe if there is uh, some... Uh, oh gosh, I think they said antibodies or some indicators of Epstein-Barr virus still being in there when I had mono as a uh, child. Or, um, you know, they can do a test food sensitivities and all that. Also a, a, a nutritional protocol uh, that is catered, you know, for my needs uh, according to the food sensitivities and all that would be... Uh, is in the treatment plan. So, um, so um, it's more important to be able to be functional uh, than to not be functional. So, um, this is, you know, what I have done to educate myself, to better myself, and to treat myself properly. If, you know, people who treat themselves according to their doctors, you know, proper certified qualified assessments, and recommendations, you know, they do have a lower risk of Alzheimer's and dementia uh, when they're older, and um, their lives are definitely more quality. Um, I just believed a, a, a something that was not true for a long time, that Adderall was toxic to you and dangerous, and I'm poisoning my brain, and uh, that's entirely not true. There is no research uh, that supports that that medically assisted tech, uh, therapy would do that. So um, this is, again, was done at the Amen Clinics. You can, you know, study it yourself. Um, uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, double board certified doctor um, and psychiatrist. And uh, let's see, you can go to amenclinics.com and, you know, kind of see, you know, what I had done. Okay, so here's a cool part. So there is hope. You can actually do things to repair your brain. And part of the treatment plan is, you know, definitely doing that. And I do have to say, I'm adding personally to my treatment plan continually vacation. And, and I know why, why I go on vacation all the time is because I work so hard in my brain. I have to work probably 10 times harder in my brain than the normal person to overcompensate you know, these issues and, and I'm very successful at it. And, you know, I get exhausted and that's why I go on lots of vacations and Harvard, uh, Framingham studies at Harvard definitely showed the benefits of, you know, travel and vacation. And that's why I go on so much vacation because you would not believe how hard I have to work to be successful so much harder than the person with a normal healthy brain. So, um, there's also hope for those who struggle with anxiety and addiction, and here's a cool thing, um, those struggling with addictions, you know, they can totally, on weed and different things, totally destroy the, the basal ganglia here, but here's the thing, when they're off of that stuff and they're repairing and, and they, they actually uh, follow a treatment plan, um, this repairs, and so they can have their health back, you know, and, and so, um, you know, I can get back to the overactivity being in the healthy areas and uh, I can manage really well right here. It's just I have to do a lot more effort to be successful with managing it and it exhausts me. And right here, um, you know, I can get back to this. So, you know, I, I would imagine following my treatment plan one year from now. We're going to look and see the brain scans again. It's not going to look like this a year from now. It's definitely going to look closer to the healthier. Now, this, the brain injury, will always be there. That's just a dead spot in the brain. It was injured and there is no blood flow. So you can't repair a brain injury. I mean, unless it was, you know, miraculous, which is always possible. Um, but, you know, I follow the treatment plan and, and there is hope, guys. So, so you can, you know, I'm 46 right now. And um, I can restore and repair my brain a lot back to this following the appropriate, appropriate treatment plan. Uh, now that I've had the appropriate assessments, right? 
And uh, I could have a brain that looks like a 30 year old, you know, and reverse my aging, okay? So this is very real stuff, very important stuff, very scientific stuff, and nobody has done as many studies and research as Amen Clinics have done. So uh, that's very promising. And uh, find help, find hope, but, which is totally cool. So, you know, if you know anyone struggling with Lyme's disease, addictions, ADD, uh, unable to lose weight, depression, anxiety, PTSD, marital conflict, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, they do a truly scientific brain assessment to see where in your brain uh, these things are coming from. And um, uh, this is just the coolest thing I've ever seen. I've studied Dr. Amen for 20 years now and I finally uh, got a clinic in Atlanta here and so I thought that's it, I'm doing this. So. Um, it was a super cool experience.